Oh, hi, we're live. It always takes a second to show on the YouTubes. So hello, 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 everybody. Once it's starts showing that we're live. That's really bad lighting. Excuse me. <laughs> it looks gorgeous. I was on a client call yesterday and my uh -huh. I get like a message from my manager because he's on the call with me and it's like smile. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. And then I just saw like the live on my phone, and I'm like not smiling. I'm like no one. Pardon? Yeah, no, I, I was purposely not smiled. I purposely not smiled purposely not smile just time. because he told me to smile. So I, yes. I messaged him. I was like, please, meaning like please, like I'm stressed right now that I'm on this call. <laughs> That's funny. All right, I think we're showing live. I do see that we are yes. live. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, we're here to talk about uh, Silver Flame by Hannah Howe. Woohoo! I don't have the pretty cover. I lost it. I used to, but I don't know I where I lost it is. mine too. I had to buy well, another one. <laughs> I think it's somewhere in my closet. Okay, I have a closet of doom. There's like, it's like Lisa's closet. Um, It's just stacks and stacks of books, and I have no organization in there. So, I think it got lost to that pile. But anyways, I have this one. I had two copies, so all is well. Anyways, um, I guess we'll just go around, say hi, and what our rating was. I'll start. My name's Samantha. Uh, <laughs> I gave this two stars. Mm, yeah, two stars. I, I feel like three stars is very generous. It was um, not great. It was interesting. It was not the worst thing I've ever read but it was just not the best either. So two stars. Jessica? Um, I already texted Samantha this. Um, I <laughs> DNF'd it. <laughs> so I'm really interested in what Lisa says. Um, I made it to 122, and I was just like, there is nothing I want to continue reading. So, yeah. 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 Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Lisa, and... I gave it a two stars too. I basically DNF'd it as well. Like I finished maybe 50% and then I was just like, why am I doing this? And then I felt so bad because I'm like invited as a special guest. But like, I'm like, I don't even like the book. And I knew it wasn't going to be a book that I would continue reading when the first page, there was just like really heavy accents. And I was just like the same for me. Yeah, yeah. The writing style was a thing Jessica and I were talking about. Like, I've read Highland books. I've read medieval books before. I've never read one that was so intense. Like, yes. I wanted an audiobook so bad, but my library did not have one. No, I don't know if I couldn't library. buy one on Audible either. Like, I was going to buy one, but I couldn't. Like, not available. Yeah. I don't I don't know if there is an audiobook because, like, I, I have a library card to many places <laughs> so i don't know why i couldn't find one um it's okay if you didn't read the book neither did jessica finish it so it's <laughs> <laughs> i was reading it just too slowly because like you said the accent i was like i can't read this as fast as i normally do so i'm like i don't know what they're saying yeah it was it was rough i'm i'm curious if anyone has read hannah howell before she writes many Highland books. Do they all have the same writing style? Because that's rough. Yeah. Um, okay, about five pages in. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> no audiobook. Okay. It was just like the the romance though was so insta love. He was like, "Oh my god, she's mine, and I'm gonna have yeah. her." And then he had her, and then she ran away, and then now they're reunited. That's where I stopped. I was like, I can't with this. Yeah. 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 It was just so slow. The external conflict with her mother, the main point of the book, it was just anticlimactic. I like the ending was just like, mm. I feel like there was all these random side characters being thrown in that really didn't have like any relevance to the story. And I just feel like the villain was like a very stereotypical, like mwahaha villain, like an evil queen type of stereotype. So I don't know. Um, yeah. That's why I give like, is this book a part of a series? 
because it felt like I just jumped into the middle of the series it where this girl's it's not part of the series. I thought it was. Oh, is it? I thought so. I it felt like we should have known her background. Like we should have known that her whole family was murdered or going to be murdered or whatever. Well, I thought she thought her mom was dead. Like it was like her whole family was being threatened by someone. Yeah. And she's it's a like, standalone. Oh, okay. Well, I got confused. I was just like, what is happening in this book? Yeah. And I agree. The insta love was just too much. I was just like, what's happening? Why are you like so obsessed with her, chasing after her, wanting to have coitus with her? <laughs> and then like <laughs> So okay, so some of you guys haven't read the book. So the main plot of the like conflict i would say is that she's like a highborn lady her father has money um and then she has a uh, stepbrothers because her father remarried and the remarried wife is like the typical evil queen of course uh and wants the inheritance for herself and her new husband so she kills her father and um her aunts or her grandmother who does she who else does she kill i think it's her grandmother she kills her family and is also <laughs> trying to kill her own daughter and sons so that she can have all of the inheritance so yeah okay she's evil yeah i dnf right when we met her so okay and that was when they were getting like all these different characters and i was like i don't know who anybody is and you're acting like i should know who these people are and i just another question is like did you did you guys start reading this like right away or like did you guys like when did you guys read this because i tried to read it today like this morning i woke up early and i was just like okay let's let's get this done let's get this done guys that was my plan today and i was like i can't <laughs> i have a live stream tomorrow for another book so i had to start this one earlier i read it wednesday thursday friday and then i finished it today it literally took me four days like to finish it because it was so slow i was so bored i was like nothing's happened like he decided he liked her him and farthing are just like fighting all the time and right. I did not like how like Farthing was like feeling her up when they were sleeping, like to make him mad. I was like, what is your motivation here? And I was like, does Farthing actually like her? And that's yeah. why he's doing it. I couldn't read him. And then he I kept saying really, Yeah, it was more so protection. Like she was protected by people assuming that she was his wife. But I didn't get that vibe from him. I was like, I feel like he's taking advantage of the situation, not that he wants to protect her. Mm. I know. And then he kept emphasizing that she's like a sister to me. And then I'm like, why are you touching her then? <laughs> I was like so confused. Yeah. I, someone in the Goodreads review had said this was like a love triangle. And I was like, was it though? Was it a love triangle? <laughs> because Farthing never had a chance. Like, no. yeah. I never liked him. But I, Farthing I thought was really old, but then it said he was like 27. Um, and I, I read it like he was like older than her. I don't know. Yeah. I'd be a lot older than her. So are we going to talk about the scene where, it, like, she ends up in his bed? Like, how do we feel about that? He, like, well, so I know a lot of people have issues with, like, blackmail. And he pretty much blackmailed her to sleep with yes. him. I didn't have an issue with the blackmail, but she liked it. So. <laughs> okay. So do you, do we consider this dubious consent or do you feel like, no, it was just, no. okay. All right. I don't think so. Lisa? Is this, like, the first time they had? Sex. Yeah, and she, well, okay, so in the book, for those of you who didn't read it, she is stealing, and this man, like, really wants her, like, he's obsessed with her, but she's, he thinks she's married, so he catches her stealing, basically says that he will report her to the authorities, which means, like, her hands will be cut off, um, if she doesn't sleep with him for one night, so it's blackmail that he's basically getting her into his bed, but she also kind of wants to sleep she with him. clearly wants it. She really yeah, wants it. Yeah. Yes. Like, she kept saying, yes, like, do it. Like, Yeah, he did say yes multiple times. It was like, no, oh this is bad because I'm married, but yes, I do want you. So, it was yeah. so funny, though, too, because he was like, wait, you're a virgin? And she's yeah. like, yeah, he had an accident. <laughs> 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 so I him. It was, that was funny. I liked that. Yeah. And I don't think that was ever addressed after that point that it was clarified, like, he did not have an accident. <laughs> Well, because you said he ends up sleeping with her mom. Oh, my God. Yes. I was just so, like, God, this nothing made sense in this book. Like, he's her best friend. He's literally willing to risk his entire inheritance, his life, his bloodline. And then he sleeps with the mom for, like, knowledge to, like, coerce her or something. I'm like, no. Ugh. Gross. Just gross. 
Does anything happen with the uh, twins, like her brothers? They're just like the funny side characters. I don't really know. I don't think nothing well, major. Them, so. Yeah. Okay. And I was also confused. I was like, where is this plot going? When um, around where I stopped reading, it was like, oh, now Farthing, he, even though he's a bastard child, he is now like the sole heir to his father's whatever he had. And I was like, what is happening? Like, who are we supposed <laughs> to be following and caring about? Like, how does that affect our heroine and her romance? Like, yeah. There's too much. <laughs> this is the problem a lot of people had on Goodreads. They felt like it was like dubious consent because it was coercion. And that coercion is not an adamant yes. From the the books we've read, I will say she was pretty consenting. So even <laughs> though it was like that, she was very willing. I feel like I'm very, very like hard on books when it comes to consent. And I didn't really feel like too bothered. But obviously everyone has their own opinion. Yeah. Um, it's historical. Okay, Beauty and the Beast. I saw that one and I wanted to read it because the cover looked really good. Has anyone read that one? No. I do have that one. I have some of like her newer books too. Like she had her Highland series and she published republished them with like new covers. I have those. But I guess it's like dialogue because that was annoying. Let me see. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, E, J, D, K. <laughs> he's right here. Oh, these aren't the newer ones. Where's the newer one? Don't knock your shelf over. Oh, yeah, that's a possibility. Oh, it's right here. This one is called Highland Destiny, and it's an old book, but a new cover. No, this does not have the same dialogue i can already tell just opening it no this is normal i must say i was pretty happy after reading this book that i never bid on a hannah howell lot on ebay <laughs> yeah like i'm i was very excited i was like oh thank goodness i don't have these books in my room well, people love her i'm so oh, confused yeah. did we pick a bad one maybe if there's some it's just a bad one it has think a four star average on goodreads but it only has 600 ratings or something. Like, nobody read it. <laughs> and, like, I was, I read every single review because there was only 30 of them. There was, like, 32. Yeah. The people, like, I nobody read it. Like, listen, guys, this is what happens when we pick a book and haven't read it, okay? You, get, you win some, you lose some. It but wasn't Judy. Good good one, though. Oh, of course we have. What was last month? I feel like I liked last month. The Teresa Medeiros. Oh, I did like last month. That one yeah. was really oh, good. I'm excited to read more. Oh, that does remind me. We need to pick our next three after this uh, live show. Yeah. So if anyone has like authors that they want to us to pick, it would be next year because we already have the books picked till December. Yeah. Um, so if you have any authors, we're going to be reading Nora Roberts soon. Um, who else are we reading? Um, Marsha Canham. Mm-hmm. Um, sorry if you can hear Lily barking. I was trying to see how many books she wrote before this one, but uh, oh, and Cat Martin. Oh yes, 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 I remember. Yeah, so if there's any one. Lisa, if you have any of your favorite old historical romance authors, just let us know. I don't have any. Uh old ones yet. Joanna Lindsay. I think I'm going to read some of hers. I have so much of hers. Let me read. We've done two Joanna Lindsay's, I think. One last year, one this year. Yeah. Um, they're both really good. Boys? Boys. Is she write westerns? I feel like she writes westerns. No? Am I mm -hmm. wrong? I don't think so. I have a bunch of Brenda Joyce books. Joe Beverly. I have a lot of Joe Beverly books. Oh, I really want to read The Rake by Mary Jo Putney. But it's very was it before two thousand. I think so. Um, he's an alcoholic, like Gideon from Again the Magic. I think Mary Below is that how you say her last name? Listen, I've been trying to get her, <laughs> and Jessica adamantly is like, no, not, not why, why? Oh, they're so low angst and so boring. Really? But like <laughs> Crystal loved it. 
No, I, can't. I tried read? a couple and I was like, I'm bored to tears right now. Oh man, but the ratings are so high. Okay, well, you know what? I shouldn't complain because I don't have any of her books. So this is a blessing if it if it is really slow. The rate came out in 1998. So yeah. We Devereux. recently read a Jude Devro, Knight in Shining Armor. We oh, read that one. Um, I don't think we would redo her because I don't really feel like that one was a it was like an average rating. I think I gave it three stars. But it was like a oh, classic. And I'm like, this is your classic from her? Yeah. A lot of people liked that one for sure. How yeah. about Virginia so, Henley? I don't think she published before. Oh, you don't like Virginia Henley? Why? We DNF'd hers. That Which was the one, one that we like all collectively DNF'd. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hello. I have a whole lot. Like, there were four of us in that live show. Not a single one of us finished that book. Why? We why? all DNF'd it. It was, was horrible. It bad? I don't yeah. even remember why. It was so, like, the writing was bad. Um, okay, this is, like, short the general consensus is this one was just boring. <laughs> the Silver Flame, <laughs> we detoured from it. Um, oh, it wasn't, like, offensive or overly bad. It was just, like, lacking substance. And it was long for no good reason. Yes. Jessica, would you uh, read another Kathleen Woodwiss? I would. I want to. Okay. Maybe we'll read The Wolf and the Dove, the classic. I'm concerned, though, that the audios are going to edit stuff. Mm. Like they did with yeah. Lisa. That is a good question because we will be in 2023, but we're still doing uh, before the year 2000. Yeah. Right, Jessica? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I have a ton of other authors. I'm not in my own. Oh, we could do another Amanda Quick. Oh, I would love another Amanda Quick. I would Please, love it. Have you read any uh, Amanda Quick? No. But I know you guys well, like it. Like, I know Lacey good. and you read a Amanda Quick book once upon a time, and you guys really liked it. Yeah. yeah. Ravished. So good. Yes. That one. yes. Mm hmm. Or we, we did that another Julie, but we just did Julie got one. We could do another Beverly Jenkins. Oh, we could because what is the one? Topaz? Topaz. It was not Topaz. It's the other one. Um, start with a V. Vivid. Vivid. Is it Vivid? Yeah, it's Vivid. vivid. <clears throat> yes. Okay, and this one published. Is her name Vivid? This one was published in 1995, so it would fit the criteria. Look at this beautiful cover. Shall be beautiful. I there love it, it. I have the new cover that um, the bookshop did to this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. I really like that one. What the whole box? Yeah. Yeah. I did. I was, I was kind of <laughs> about it. Yeah, because I got it too. And I was like, oh. I didn't know they were illustrated when I bought them, but then Tori had told me they were illustrated. So I was like, mm, okay, Queen Bev. That's what I'm here for. Yeah. And the swag looked like it was printed in their home. Yeah. I didn't even. Wait, the, the, what? the what looked like it was printed in their home? The they had like swag. So they had like bookmarks. And then like, I didn't even know it was like soap or something with like a label. Literally, my labels cut, like someone cut it with like kid scissors. And all the bookmarks are blurry and have like the lines on them. <laughs> yeah. And you paid for it or was it for free? Uh, no. I paid for it. it was like $100. Yeah, it was like $100. Mm. Yeah. That's disappointing. And I do like the cover for Vivid, but I'm not a huge fan of a lot of the other covers. That's the only cover I liked. And I mean, it's worth it for me because it's Beverly Jenkins and we got the book plate, but I put the book plate in freaking Indigo. I didn't even put it in that one. <laughs> She's going to be at a signing this summer. Stop. Where? Denver. But it's like, I think Denver's like Book Bonanza and the tickets are like $250. Ugh, I can't. I can't do a bunch of signings that expensive. But it's like Beverly it's Jenkins. Not even, be it's not even the price. It's like, I don't have enough vacation time. My boss mm -hmm. is just going to laugh at me if I ask for another, another week off. I was trying to go to the Vegas one when I found out you and Lacey were going. Oh, really? I was wondering if you were going because it's, like, super close to you. No, because nobody I knew was going until, like, last minute. 
Oh, yeah. Well, I'm not going as a reader either, so I'm going to be working the whole thing. Yeah, that's true. We completely derailed this live show. I mean, do we want to complain? Did Nobody has anything good to say. No, there's really nothing. It's oh, not I mean, horrible. Like... I like the cover. I don't know. If anybody has a Hannah how they really liked, let me know, and I'll give her a shot. But Sandra Brown has some historicals like Hidden Fire and Sunset Embrace. Hidden Fire is the one that Tessa Bailey said was her first romance she ever read. Was it? Yeah, because Tessa Bailey got to meet Sandra Brown this weekend, and she was like, holy crap, that's like the reason that why I got into romance. Oh, someone said, what about the end? The heroine just decided she must stay away from the hero because she will become evil like her mother, and absolutely nothing happened during the time. There was no reason for them not to be together. That was the thing. Even if she needed, like, a knight to save, like, her and, like, get her inheritance back, he had, like, his family's resources. So there was no reason for them not to be together. Yes, let's talk about it. Did you guys see the Queen Charlotte spinoff for Netflix? I did not watch the thing they posted, but... Neither did I. I saw the picture, and I thought she was gorgeous, and I immediately got happy. Yes. I'm very excited. Did it say when it's going to come out? I don't know. I'm just waiting for them to tell us when Bridgerton comes back. Season What's three? Queen Charlotte? Yeah. What? What's Queen Charlotte? It's about the Queen. Uh, it's about the... So Netflix is doing a Bridgerton spinoff where it's the Queen's um, story. So, I mean, completely going off the Bridgerton storyline because we didn't really get to read too much about her in the books. Hmm. Okay. But it's her backstory, which her story is kind of cool, like historically. So cool. Cool, cool, cool. Did you guys see the whole Briar and Bear and Netflix legal situation? What's that? Which what's that one? So you know the Bridgerton musical? The people from mm -hmm. TikTok created this huge Bridgerton musical. They were like great, fantastic. Well, they made like a Spotify playlist, which they're gathering income from. And then they did, they sold out the Kennedy Center mm -hmm. and had a performance there. And we're selling Bridgerton merchandise, like with Bridgerton's name on it, but they didn't have any licensing to do that. Mm -hmm. And like Netflix supposedly contacted them, like, oh, this is great, like what you're doing. It sounds really creative, but like, here's the licensing that you need to purchase, purchase it. And they never did. So now Netflix is suing them for copyright infringement. Yeah. I and think I saw a summary of that on TikTok. And they're going to lose, which is their own fault, because they could have easily purchased licensing. Yeah. Um, I think Jessica froze. <laughs> I didn't even realize she froze. I thought she just paused there for a second there. But okay, anyway. <laughs> Yeah, she said, hold on a sec. All right, we'll hold on for you. This is the chaotic um, reading vlog. Uh, not reading vlog, live show. I can't even talk. Honestly, Netflix has a case. Yeah, they do. They absolutely do. They're going to win. And you know they have, like, top-notch lawyers. You think, like, these people on TikTok have good lawyers? I don't think so. Yeah, exactly. It's just going to be... And it's not even, like bad for publicity to netflix to like chase after this because the musical people are clearly in the wrong kind of thing yeah it's that's no netflix, netflix approved of the musical originally they thought it was fun and creative yeah. um but once you're making a profit off of it you kind of have to give credit to the author because julia quinn i think yeah. is a part of the lawsuit as well yeah exactly it makes sense for julia quinn to fight because it's like her shit mm-hmm that they're using without their permission and also they're not getting any profit from it. Netflix is yeah, going to Exactly. I mean, I am all for like tearing down the patriarchy, okay? <laughs> down with, with like, capitalism, but like this capitalism, is not <laughs> but Netflix in this one tiny situation is correct. Yeah, this is not the way to do it. You need licensing for high school performances? I'm confused. Anyways, so what are you currently reading right now since everybody didn't like this book and we're just moving on from it? What I'm currently reading, okay, well, I took a break from reading for this week. And so I just read Silver Flame by Hannah Howell. Um, <laughs> let me look at my other books I was reading 
this week or prior week so that we could talk about it um because i completely forgot i was reading some historicals some new 2022 releases i read sophie jordan i even read megan frampton lisa Byrne, Mm -hmm. and i was just reading a bunch of random like novellas because i was like what i love novellas i love them Exactly. So I was catching up on Casey Mint because there was like a bunch that I never read. So I was just like, okay, I'm going to read her. And yeah. And then other things I'm reading. I was reading some like thrillers that I was anticipating to read. So I finished those. You like the new Sophie Jordan, Lisa? E- I gave it a Four out of five stars, but I think it was like a very generous four out of five stars, but I like the new concept of it. So basically the hero, the heroine is a, what's the thing called when you like hit metal and then you make metal pieces and you fix like metal parts and things like that. Egg. Yeah. A, wood, mm-hmm. a blacksmith, a blacksmith. So she's a blacksmith, very untraditional like career path that she's choosing. And then the hero is shady because he's a con, like he does cons, like he's a con artist. And he and he and his dad are shady people and they go into towns and then trick people to earn money. And then afterwards, so the village found out that the hero was lying about his lineage. So then the village wanted to uh, take him to jail and basically kill him off and then our heroine steps in and saves him but then it's like a forced marriage like situation because now she's pretending to be his fiance or betrothed and then now they're like stuck in a house together and it's like forced close proximity too i thought it was very fun um but it was definitely like a very generous rating of four out of five stars because there were some moments where I was just like, okay, this is so dumb. Oh, and the ending, the ending was way too fast. It like, Mm -hmm. like, yeah, it ended off way too abruptly, but I would still recommend you to check it out. So yeah. What's the title? I know you said it was her new one. Good question. The The Scoundrel scoundrel Falls Fired. I just got the audio. I saw Sophie Jordan at a Polycon. I got some of her books signed. She was so sweet. The sweetest. I loved stopping at her table. Mm-hmm. She is. Well, I don't know. I don't really know her. I never interviewed her or anything, but like I assume she's very nice. <laughs> okay. Was that were we talking about Golden Angel last time? We were, yes. What are the books from Barnes and Noble? <laughs> I love that for her. I love but I, like her. are people reading her? I'd never heard of her before. Okay, I have to I have to admittedly, I think I said that in the live show. Um her book like I remember reading her on Wattpad. Like literally when I was like 17, 18 years old, like on Wattpad, she wrote like mainly like smut and like BDSM. And like, when I read this, I was like, whoa, what is this? And then all of a sudden, like her books are being like published, like through publishing houses. And she's redoing all of the books that she like had on Wattpad, like so many years ago. It's great. Honestly, I'm living for it, but. Okay. I was just like, wait a second. That's what they were talking about. Her books are very steamy though. Like very steamy. Um, my audio on audio. I don't know. I Actually, it's... I don't feel like you would like her books though, Jess, because it's um pretty low angst. Like it's mainly like internal conflict, not external conflict. Hmm. I I did not know Mia Vinci was coming out with her fourth book. Finally, goddamn! Like literally has taken so long. The first three were out forever ago. Have you guys ever read a Me and Vincy book before? Oh. No. I have there's one. There's a Beauty and the Beast retelling one, and it's so good. Mm-hmm. I just forget the title. It's the Earl one. Um, Devney Perry. We're excited mm-hmm. for your interview. Jessica. I've never read a Devney Perry. Doesn't she have a special edition coming out with the bookish box? Does she? I don't know what's going on with the bookish box. They're in hot water right now. I saw a post. Wait, why are we talking about the bookish box being in hot water under like other? Hey, Robert. Well, no. Originally, they were in hot water because they had some of their like limited edition things that were like mm-hmm. 
publishing issues. Like yeah. some of their like some of the words were backwards, some of the pages were misprinted, just like general publishing issues. Um, and then there was an issues with like returns and stuff. And then now, what is going on with Katie Roberts? Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask you guys. I wanted to see if you guys knew. So yeah, is it? Is, yeah, okay. go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So the publisher made a deal with the bookish box without t- confirming with Katie for like 6,000 copies. And I don't know. I think she has carpal tunnel or something. Like she physically cannot sign that many books. So she got a stamp. But the bookish box did not disclose to their customers that it would be a stamp. And I think they added 2,000 more. So like mm-hmm. total like 8,000 things she had to sign. And so readers were mad that she was stamping the books and not signing the books. And so then Katie got on was, and I guess like the bookish box said, oh, Katie feels so bad. She can't sign them. And she's like, no, I don't. I'm like literally physically limited. I don't apologize for that. And it just became this whole thing. And she got on TikTok and was like very, very, very angry. But then the next day they came out with a statement saying everything's fine. So. Yeah. They're basically accusing them of being like ableists, like, and this has been a, like, I know some authors have said this before that they don't understand why it has to be like signatures because some authors, you know, have disabilities that they can't do that. Um, But I think it was more so just like the fact that the bookish box wasn't communicating with their, with their sellers really. I mean, I bought this box, so we will see. I will not buy from them. Okay. Honestly, neither will I like morals again. Fuck the patriarchy. Like, I'm so, like, people need to, like, be good service. But l- the vampire one was a very pretty cover. I got sucked in. Well, and I think they're doing Sophie, so. I wanted the cover so bad, so. But every single box they've done, there's been an error. Like, one of them, the author's name was spelled wrong on every single page. You know how the author's name is at the top? They spelled it wrong. To be fair, I bought this book. This book on the plane from a polycon. I bought it months ago. So this was before everything happened. And they also take like six months to ship their boxes. Yeah. Yeah. And they're very expensive. So. Oh, I know. I bought the. And Laura- I'm pretty sure. Oh, you bought the Laura Thalassa? Yeah. And they misprint, like, wars missing a chapter. But, like, I don't care. I get, like, another copy. But then the problem is, is that the design for Laura Thalassa wasn't even that nice. And I paid customs for it because it shipped from America. Yeah. So it was like my total box came out to be like 200 and something dollars for all four books after I converted it back into Canadian dollars. And then like the Arcane Society, like that bookish box, those editions were way nicer. Right. And I was like, why the yeah. freak did I just get the bookish box edition? But yeah, it was all for hype. But yeah. And also bookish box threw Laura under the bus and said the formatting errors were her fault. Really? Oh, he said they were it, not her fault. Is. They did just something that ended up changing the formatting. And they're also trying to sue a guy on TikTok for yes, like reporting on their mess ups. And he's like, you can't do that. <laughs> he's literally on my timeline like every day. I'm like, yeah. So here, here's the thing. I bought it like months and months ago without knowing the drama. And now that I know the drama, I'm like, okay, well, that was my fault with not researching the company. So I'm not too upset about it. It wasn't a box. It was just a limited edition one. Mm-hmm. Um. Bye, Monica. Um. What's the next book? I'm sorry. Oh, Rebellion. Rebellion by Nora Roberts. Woohoo! I'm so excited, and it's short. <laughs> I'm for so long. I don't know if I'm excited, but I'm interested. So we will see what Nora Roberts has to offer. So Rebellion by Nora Roberts, and it will be on Jessica's channel. We don't know what day though. Sometime at the end of October. But not the last weekend, because I'll be in Vegas. And that's Halloween. True. And I'll be at the Bridgerton Ball, but I won't even be here on the live show. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lisa, I've been loving your historical videos. I need to read more historicals. I just watched the Ice Queen one. It was great. Yeah, I went back to it because I was like, hmm, I should go back to my roots. Like, <laughs> I stopped doing it for so long, and I was like, all right, time to get back myself into it. So, yeah. Um, gonna make a video where I messed up my book because I painted sprayed edges and I used oil paints instead of acrylic oh. paint and that's it that's the life but it's okay because uh, I don't really care <laughs> what books did you paint it's a free book 
that I got oh, from okay. a publisher. So I'm okay. just like, okay. <laughs> and plus mass paperback copies, they're only like $10. I'm like, $10? That's what? no problem. I can replace that. But if it was a hardcover copy, that's another story because that's $30. Yeah. yeah. Um, have you read Jennifer Haymore? Either of you? Uh, I have her books. I have her books. Okay. Her, her new one. Very pretty. Her new one was out at Barnes Noble today early and mm -hmm. it looked good, but I don't know anybody who reads her. So. It's with Entangled, right? And yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. I bought that too. I'm excited. Oh. Cause it's so pretty. <laughs> I think the Entangled historical romance covers are always so gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Is that who Stacy Reed publishes with? Yes. Okay. Yes. Eva D Eva Devon too as well. She does some of those. Who does? Uh sorry. Eva? Diva? Oh, Diva? 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 oh, I say Devin. Devin? Devin? Yeah. Jesus. Here we I don't go. know what's right. <laughs> no, I'm just pronouncing names all over the place. It's fine. Okay, wait. Hold on, wait, Lisa. I I'm not making fun of you. I swear to God, but I just want to know if I've been saying it wrong. Is it betrothed or betrothed? <laughs> you said that like 20 minutes ago, and I've just been thinking it's about betrothed. it. Betrothed. Okay. Did she say it wrong? <laughs> she said betrothed, and I was like, wait, is it betrothed or betrothed? Oh. I'm not. I swear to God, I was like, okay. I was like, am I saying it wrong this whole time? Every time I say Marquess, I'm like, is it Marquess? Marquess. And then someone told me it's pronounced Marquis. And I was like, I'm pretty yeah. sure that's wrong. But <laughs> no, if you go, go on Google, it's called Marquis. And then somebody in the Philippines commented on my video and then made fun of me and said, I just laughed so hard at how you said Marquess. It's like Marquis. No, but someone told me I was wrong that it's Marquis. And I, I some people say Marquess. There's a hotel called the Marquis. And isn't it spelled like that? Mark like Marquess, but it's Marquis and it's spelled the same way. So maybe that's why people have. The... I don't know. I still don't know how to say it right. <laughs> I still don't know how to say Eloisa Eloisa James. Like I don't even know. Like I still forget how to say her name. Eloisa? Um, no, I say Eloisa. And she says Eloisa. 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 Okay. No, El Eloisa. Is that with an A? Yeah. It's not her real name though. It's a pen name. What's her real name? Um, what was it? She published a book under her real name. No, I don't remember what it was. I can look. Because it's not historical that she published. The Nora Roberts one we picked isn't contemporary. It's, um, is it a Western? It's one of her only historicals. Yeah. She writes mainly contemporary, though, to be fair. Um, I've never read a uh, Nora Roberts, so we will see. I know people love her. I've read the J.D. Robb, but not Anora Roberts. Oh, her name's Mary. Oh. Mary. Mary Blythe. Marquise is the French spelling and phonetic of Marquess. Okay, that, I don't know. Marquis is Marquess. Right, I thought the U-I-S was Marquis. I don't but know. Books use the, um, I don't know. I, I don't know still. Well, it's it's French, but it's British nobility. Did we? That's weird. Do the do the French did the French also have like earls and stuff like that, dukes, or was that just British Britain? No, we don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I finally <laughs> figured out like who was higher or not, and now I forget like if the duke is higher. The Duke is the highest, but I don't know who else is. Because, like, I think a Viscount's super low. No. I thought a Baron was the lowest. Baron is the lowest. Yeah. <laughs> this is all I remember. You know what's so funny? But I have a whole video really low, so. Right? I have really? a whole video on this, and I don't remember. Too. I know. Yeah, I, I remember, remember looking at it, and I knew it, and I haven't used it in so long, and I'm like. If my memory is just correct, I want to say it's a Duke, Viscount, Earl, Baron? Or Duke, Earl, Viscount, Baron. What about a Marquess? Marquess? Mar Duke, Marquess. Marquess, Earl, Viscount, Baron. Wow, I was just way the fuck wrong. So <laughs> I, I thought Viscount was really low. Yeah, it is. Thank you. Woohoo! Duke, Marquess, ew, Earl. Oh, but Earl sounds so bad. Like, oh. Viscount sounds like it should be up top. You're like, 
I yeah, no, it should be with the Duke. It smells like that. If you're uh -huh. an Earl's wife, who? What are you? Because you're a duchess, a marchioness, a viscountess, and a lady. A baroness. A baroness. Sorry. Countess. Sorry, you're just a lady. A countess. countess. Why? <laughs> Why a countess? I don't know. <laughs> Then why aren't they like count instead of Earl? But I feel like count is a thing like Count Dracula. But that's the only time I've heard count before. It was for Count Dracula. <laughs> okay. Never mind. Then. <laughs> that's why I'm like, give me the Scottish. They don't have those things. We just have the laird and that's it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, we're going to wrap this up. I feel like this live show has been the most, like, random. Off the rails live show. <laughs> but somehow we all agreed on the same opinion. Correct. Oh, look, Europe has a count title because my boy Dracula's from that place. Um. Okay. All right. Anyways, doesn't matter. Uh, next month, we're reading Nora Roberts' Rebellion. It will be on Jessica's channel. If you guys need any updates, we have our Historical Hellions Instagram, where we do most of our updates. And sometimes Jess will put stuff on her like YouTube community tab. So, cool. All right. Thanks for joining us. And bye. Oh, thank you.